One day a man was on his way home from work, and he needed to stop by the grocery store. He just needed a couple of things. As he went in the store, he hunted those two things down and quickly headed to the register. He didn't pay a whole lot of attention to anything around him except the lady that was right behind him. She had a cart that was heaping full and balanced on top of all those groceries, of all things, was a TV set. The man in front of the lady received his total, and the checkout girl looked at him and said, Well, sir, it looks like you're our winner today. And as he quickly looked down and noticed he only had two things, just a loaf of bread and one other thing in his cart, but he remembered that lady behind him, and without missing a beat, the man said, Well, what do you know, honey? We won! Immediately, that woman moved up, smiled at him, and arm in arm, she got all her groceries for free, including that TV set on the top. They met one another outside in the parking lot and gave a brief laugh together and a story and a thank you was passed, and off they went on their happy ways to go to their separate homes with a story to tell that they would never forget. Now, I know, I know. The man lied, and that was wrong. And he stole, and that was wrong too. But won't you admit with me that that story is a fun story? It's a story that's not very far, apart from the lying and the stealing, from our own story of God's saving grace. Let's talk about that. All world religions contain the idea that being saved is a matter of trying hard, doing the right things, and earning your own way. But the Bible gives a different message about how to be saved. It's God's true message about salvation into eternal life. Would you join me today if you have a Bible handy? Ephesians and chapter 2. If you don't have your own, I'll be reading straight from God's Word today, Ephesians in chapter 2. Pick it up with me in verse number 1. The Bible says, And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. The word quickened means made alive. You is you. You and I both, we fit in the same category. We're sinners. We've fallen short of the glory of God. In our sins, we were dead. Now, that doesn't mean we were brain dead. It means we were dead in our ability to get out of our predicament. We couldn't do a saving act towards God. We were ruined because we were spiritually dead in our trespasses and sins. We couldn't save ourselves from our sin because our sin is what we were stuck in. And our spiritual condition was death. So there was no way out by ourselves. We couldn't make it. Verse 2, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. What did that say? Well, when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, spiritually unable to rescue ourselves, we were being obedient to the devil himself. He's the prince of the power of the air. We were clicking our heels, saluting him, and doing the things that he wanted us to do, just like the whole rest of the world was doing also. Verse 3, he says, Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. What did he say? By nature, we disobeyed God. We didn't do the things that God wanted us to do. The whole world was in that condition, and we were no different than them. And in our flesh, we were doing all the wrong things and were unable to do the right things that would be pleasing to God. Verse 4, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. What did verse 4 say? Well, it's the total opposite of what you might think it would say. 
While we might expect that Paul the Apostle wrote three verses about how bad we were and how that our spiritual condition was death, you might think that we would get a scolding in verse number four. You might think we would get wrath and anger from God, but instead we get mercy and love from God. You see, God loves sinners. If God didn't love sinners, then he wouldn't have anyone left to love because we're all sinners. But it says here that while we were sinners, while we were sinners, that God had rich mercy for us. What's mercy? Well, mercy means that you don't get what you deserve. Well, what we deserved was to get eternal separation from God because of our sin. But God didn't want us to have eternal separation from Him. He offers to everyone this mercy. And it says here in the Bible that that mercy of God is rich mercy. There's not a little of it. God is not running out of it. He's not short on it. He's rich in mercy. And that could be ours. It says, for His great love wherewith He loved us. God loves you, friend. He loves me. It's his nature to love. God is love. And we were the object of his love, even though we didn't deserve it. And though we were far from him and dead in our sins, God wanted to make us alive. And for some people, he does just that. He makes them alive. How does God pull that off? Well, first of all, in verse 5, get the time reference here. He says, even when we were dead in sins. Well, what happened when we were dead in sins? That God loved us. He had great love that he loved us with even when we were dead in sin. You see, God didn't begin to love us on the first day we obeyed him or the first time we prayed out loud or when we went to church or gave money in the offering or whatever. No, we didn't do an act that caused God suddenly to change his mind and start to love us. No, it says even when we were dead in sins. Now, we weren't sick in sins, were we? We weren't just sort of undone because of our sin. We weren't half-baked or unfinished. Mm -mm. No, we were dead in our sins and trespasses. And there was just no way that we could do anything that would put us into God's favor because of what we had done. And yet, God wanted us to not get what we deserved because He had this great love for us before we did a thing that would earn His favor. In the very end of verse 5, there's a parenthesis. It says, by grace ye are saved. And so if any of us are ever saved into eternal life, it will be by God's grace because any other way, is an impossibility for man. Because there's no way that we could do a righteous act. You remember what the Bible said in the Old Testament, Isaiah 64 and verse 6. It says, all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags to God. Now, it doesn't say that our, our bad things are filthy to God. Of course, that's true. But it says, even our righteousness to God are filthy. Why? Because even what we think is righteous before holy God is not righteous, is it? Because we're spiritually dead in our sins. Verse 6 says that for these people who are saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So those who somehow by God's ways and means end up being saved, they already spiritually are considered by God to be seated in the heavenly realm. (laughs) Wow. It sounds like God is very certain that the people that he saves are saved for keeps. Hmm? That they spiritually already are raised up and seated, having done every necessary thing to wrap up their eternal salvation. And that's true. But what is the thing that we can do who are loved by God and are offered God's mercy. What is the thing? Well, most people have sought out other religious statements about that. 
And most people think they can be saved by righteous deeds. But the Bible gives a different message. The Bible says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. That's in Titus chapter 3 and verse 5. The Bible is such a different message than all the world religions. The Bible says in verse 7 that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Our salvation can only be by God's grace. And in the eternal state, whenever we get there, when time catches up to where God already is, we're going to be shocked at who is saved because it turned out to not be saved by stature in the community. It turned out to not be by man's riches or wealth or by man's accomplishment. It's not by righteous deeds that we've done. It's not by earning our way to God through good work. There will be a shock in heaven when God unveils those trophies of saved people, and we find out in the end of it all, the only people who were ever saved from the deadness of their sin were people who received the grace of God. Verse 8, he says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You see how different this sweet message of God's grace is than all the things that The world religions tell us. We don't have a word here about pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps or crying all night long or trying to pray through hour after hour or having to name every one of our sins to show God how sorry we are or promising God that we won't sin anymore even though that's an absolute impossibility of man. Now this is about being saved by grace. So don't you agree with what God says in the Bible, friend, that the only salvation offered to us is not by our works, but it's by God's grace. Do you agree that's the message of the Bible? Well, then here's a question. Since grace is the only thing that can save us, what's your definition of grace? Since that's the only thing that you would be able to share with your best friend or your mom and dad, How would you explain how they could be saved if it's by grace? What is that thing? How would you define grace? I find when I ask that question, a lot of people really don't have a good understanding of what is the nature of grace, how how to define that. The word grace means favor. It means favor. Someone comes in the favor of God. You know how that works? Well, God sent his son, Jesus Christ. Our sin just can't be ignored by God. He can't just bend himself at the waist and yell out of heaven, Hey, I love everybody. You're all saved. Don't worry about your sin. I forgot all about it. God can't do that. He'd be a terrible judge. God judged our sin. It's just that we didn't have to pay the price because Jesus Christ came. That's what the cross was all about, wasn't it? Jesus bore our sin in his body and took our payment, the death penalty, and paid that once and for all for us so that now we could come into the favor of God by doing one thing. He says, by grace are you saved through faith. Friend, there's one condition for your salvation. It's faith in Jesus Christ plus nothing else. And God would save you absolutely for free. The word faith means believe. Won't you do that right now and have everlasting life by His grace? 